Journey is one of rock and roll's most accomplished and storied bands, selling a whopping 70 plus million albums over the course of their career and writing some of the biggest songs in history, like Don't Stop Believing. Nobody can take anything away from them, but they're certainly doing everything they can to hurt their own legacy and the attention surrounding their 50th anniversary tour by going tit for tat in the most passive aggressive way, feuding over credit card statements and appearances at Mar-a-Lago, things that their fans generally care absolutely nothing about. Things internally behind the scenes are far more toxic than what we're even seeing publicly, which was already incredibly toxic, including just earlier this month, the band's own singer, Arnell Panetta. This is exactly what he tweeted after apparently it was rumored that he was opposed to Greg Raleigh, who is the band's original keyboardist uh, early on in the band's career, returning or joining the band on tour. He said that he was not involved in that decision and slammed the rumors about himself, sharing this on Twitter earlier this month. He said, you people are unbelievable. Whoever's spreading rumor about me regarding the Greg Raleigh issue are maliciously ignorant. I'm not gonna stoop down to your level. He tweeted later, if some of them are tired of me being with them, with all means, they can fire me anytime. All of this is to say that many Journey fans are clearly frustrated by this, as is apparently one member of Journey themselves. And as you'll find from this new Billboard report, which has a lot of sourcing in it, that things are even more toxic behind the scenes than what we've already seen in public. There are some crazy things in this report. So let's take a look. Before we continue, YouTube tells us we have a lot of returning viewers here. Most of you have not yet subscribed. If you can take just a quick second to hit that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. Right off the jump in this article, shit gets crazy almost immediately in which they reveal that Jonathan Cain apparently caught an assistant snooping around in his locker room for reasons that are unknown. And he apparently hired an off-duty police officer to guard his room backstage. It says, early in Journey's 2022 arena tour, lead guitarist Neil Schoen became convinced people were out to get him. So he stationed two off-duty police officers outside his dressing room, according to sources familiar with the tour. And at a Florida show last spring, Schoen and his wife, Michelle, sent an assistant into keyboardist Jonathan Kane's dressing room to snoop around. To find what, the sources have no idea. Kane caught the assistant red-handed and then hired an off-duty police officer to guard his own dressing room, the sources say. So for much of the tour, which sold 296,000 tickets and grossed 31 million, two of the three musicians who wrote Don't Stop Believing and performed it every night for decades squabbled over whether one guard outranked the other in the event of a dispute between Shone and Kane. That's just the level of pettiness and control and conspiracy they came to believe in, a source says of the Shones. It goes on to say this combative back and forth might suggest the central tension in Journey is between Shone and Kane, the remaining members of the group's megastar era. But numerous music sources who have worked with the band over the years say the lead guitarist is obsessed with controlling the band with Michelle, a fan since childhood who took interest in Journey's affairs soon after their 2013 wedding. The actual conflict, they say, isn't Shone versus Kane, but rather Shone versus everyone. Quote, he's just an impossible human being, says an industry source who has worked with the band. Jonathan, he's a good guy. I wrote Don't Stop Believing and I'm blessed. Neil's just, I'm a superstar. The article closes out talking about a recent performance on their 50th anniversary tour that says, the six band members lined up and group hugged and fist bumped, happy to perform again after several months off for the holidays. But Kane and Shone stood at opposite ends of the line. They did not hug each other. They did not bump fists with each other. Finally, Shone bounded off stage by himself. That's a very in-depth report from Billboard. I've linked to it in the description of this video. Hopefully they're able to work this out. There are no winners in this situation. No matter what ends up happening, nobody wins here. The brand of Journey is not being helped at all by any of this nonsense, that's for sure. So uh, let me know what you think in the comments if you're a Journey fan. I know that there has been a tumultuous, rocky environment with Journey for a number of years, but I can never remember it being this bad. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the latest news and updates from Rockfeed.